and welcome back now today i've got something really exciting to show you no i mean it it's, it's not just two blinking leds now it's much more useful than that and you'll probably want to try this yes indeed now these blinking leds we covered once um on a few videos ago videos ago now wasn't it about where we use millis to execute a bit of um code now and again every 100 milliseconds or something and go back to the loop and then call another function and do that every few millis to give the um well it's not just the impression it really did multitask by allocating a bit of time to various functions and that was great and there was a lot of feedback on that about well you found it very useful and i'm glad you did but a few of you said well how about using a real-time operating system in fact use the free artos that's what it's called it's not it is free but it's called free artos it's what runs on the ESP32, albeit slightly modified for dual core, and I said, no, it's surely not. I mean, you just, it's nonsense. You couldn't run it on hard. We know. Could you? Oh, we are though. Okay, I retract my statements. You can actually run free Artos on this Arduino Uno uh, in a fairly meaningful way, and we'll come on to what I mean by that a little bit later. But let's see how we run these two blinking leds and indeed whilst they're running we have of course got um, the loop that's whizzing around doing stuff as well so what's that doing i want to give a big shout out to jlc pcb and there's a few things i want to bring to your attention first of all as you can see there's industrial 3d printing let's have a closer look at that shall we 3d printing is very easy as it shows you here add your files to their website make a click on which product it is you want it to be made from and then just follow the directions on screen. Really, really easy. You can make shapes like these as well without owning a 3D printer yourself. You really need to give it a try. And to learn more about their 3D printing capability, watch the video with the charming Naomi, who will walk you through exactly how their system works. Additive manufacturing is just another word for 3D printing. Now here's a thing that will make you smile, purple PCBs. Yes, I've ordered one of these and I've used it in one of my projects. As you can see here, it looks very nice. And now they've got multiple colours. So yeah, choose the colour that suits your project the best. And don't forget the free assembly for your PCB. And it's $2 for one to four pieces, regardless of the colour of the board. You can't go wrong with that. Why not have a look at them now? Right, the um, serial monitor cool term is connected up there and if I connect up it should reset the Arduino so have a look there it goes so we say set up started completed one task on pin 5 another task on pin 4 it's lost the last character of the task name there don't know why but anyway this bit here is coming out from the loop not one of those LED blinking tasks so we've actually got three things running here hmm well that's that's not bad is it um Let's have a look at the code and see how this was done. And believe me, yeah, you, John, John and James at the back, that I know that you're beginners, but even you can do this. Right, here's the code to do it, right? And it all hangs on the um, Arduino Free Artos library, which you can see at the top there. Oh, yes, <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves. We are still using the libprintf library because it just makes outputting stuff from the serial port so much easier. One line and embed all the variables into it, okay? I did do a whole video about yeah, that one again, yes. I'll keep saying it until people use it. Oh, you are using it. Oh, good for you. Right, anyway, moving on. So the Arduino Free Artos um, library is the one that's been tweaked a little bit from the uh, the standard embedded processor library. And, um, well, it's, this is meant for the Arduino, as the name probably gives the game away there. So we'll just move on from that, I think. A uh, couple of um, LED pins here. Four and five, that's what's driving the red and green ones. These are my two um, forward declarations for the task we're going to run. I don't think we actually strictly need to do that because today, yes, I know it's a shock, I'm using the Arduino IDE 2.0, as in fact it says right at the top there of my screen, look. And it's the nightly build from the 17th of March 22. And it's, it's dare I say this, I'll whisper it, it's getting better. So I don't think we need to put these two statements in here because I think the Arduino IDE still has a check to see what your functions are and does this for you, but there's no harm in doing it. 
Um, these are the handles to the task. What's a handle to a task, I hear you ask? What's a handle to a task? <laughs> yes. Uh, basically, it's just so that you can you can attach something to the task or address the task. So your loop, for example, could say, Oi, red task, because by then the red task is running. You can say, Oi, red task, stop. Or reduce your priority down to zero so you, you won't run anyway because there's other tasks to run. Or potentially, this would be a bit self-defeating, but you could say, I'll increase the task priority, which probably means nothing else gets to look in. But anyway, the point is, it's a way of, of getting information to and from that task. Okay, so you, you don't need the task handle. If you think, I'm never going to talk to that task ever again, it just does its own thing in the background, you don't need a handle. Okay, so in the setup, I'm not going to go through this line by line, I don't think, because I know a lot of you like to download this code and then look at it in your own time. But let's let's speed up then. So, okay, serial monitor, uh, the pins red and green. Yeah. Now this is these are the two tasks. Look, see this for the red and green. So we create a task. This is um, what we want to run the very first line. So there's a function down there that says task blink. Um, okay, and this one's called blink green, and we're going to give it 256 bytes of stack memory. That was just a, a wild guess. Well, no, it wasn't actually. I first of all gave it 2,000. 2,000 bytes. I mean, my goodness, we're not running on an ESP32 here, are we? No, of course, that didn't work at all. It just stopped. Um, so I eventually went down to 200, and eventually I played about a little bit, and 256 seemed to work okay, so I just, I just left it at that. We'll talk a bit more about stack memory that we're uh, allowing each task to have uh, a little bit later on in the video okay uh, this is where you pass a parameter across you don't have to pass a parameter across if you don't want to pass anything across you can just put null in there in capital letters but if you do want to pass a parameter across it can only be one let me repeat that one parameter you can't give it integer a and integer b and integer c not unless you put them all into a struct yeah, they don't have to be all integers, of course, in a struct. Yeah, the struct can contain any number of types of variables, and you pass the whole struct over. But you do have to pass it over as a pointer, so you have to put that little ampersand in front of it. Okay, and yes, you do have to put void start at the beginning because that's, it is a pointer to a void type. Okay, I'm, I'm not going there. That's the way you do it. Okay, whatever you're going to pass across, just put it after the ampersand. That's the priority. Please, please, please keep it as one as you get all sorts of difficulties. So everything runs at the same priority and everything gets looking. And there's the handle if you need to use a handle so that you can do something with that task again from somewhere else. Okay. Uh, the other blink task is exactly the same code. That's, a, that's the same copy of the code if you like, but um, it's blinking a different LED. So there's not a lot different there, except we're passing over a different parameter. That's for the green LED pin, and that's the red LED pin. Okay, and the loop. Now, if we don't do this for the loop, the loop will not run. Now, I didn't think the loop task ran at all, but apparently they've put it as part of the idle task. So when there's nothing else to do at all, that's when the loop will run, which means probably never. So the best thing to do is create your own loop task. Call it something like my loop and uh, put that into a task and run it as per normal because then you can have control over other tasks that you create as well. So in all the future code, think my loop. So by default, you can have a loop in your Arduino sketch, but it won't ever run anymore. I don't know why they've done it like that. But I thought, hmm, I quite like having a loop in my sketches just so I've got some sort of master control. So I just, I just built this loop statement here. Um, there are no parameters, so I gave it a null, and you'll see in the description the loop obviously doesn't have it. it just says void loop, open bracket, close bracket, doesn't it? So that seems to work okay. And no handle either, because we don't want to ever get hold of that loop task ever again. It just runs. So let's have a look at this, this blink task, then, this task blink, rather, that's being used by both tasks. Yeah, and here it is, so let's have a look. And what it says is, oh, this is task xyz see this pc task get name null which means the current task the name that we're talking about is the name you've put here in quotes yeah that's a user-friendly name 
you can search for tasks by that, but it's, it's not a great idea. No. So that's just telling us which task is running. Um, we're getting the parameter. We're de dereferencing the parameter. I'm not going to talk about that either. And you, you can watch a future video, if it's not already published by now, on pointers and why we're doing it like this. But this gets the value of the of the parameter that we passed in as a pointer, right? So my LED pin is equal to whatever it was, four, five, six, seven, I can't remember now. Uh, another little printf there just to let us know what's going on. Now, very, very important. A task must never end. If you were to somehow get to the bottom of this void, so it says void task blink, if somehow you were to get to this point here, so it ends, the thing will crash. And that's true of the ESP32 as well. You cannot have a task that crashes, uh, that uh, ends. So you say for, in brackets, semicolon, semicolon. This is like, do this forever. Which, funny enough, is what the Arduino program around yours, standard program this is, says about the loop. It says, go and do the setup, and then go and do the loop in exactly the same way as that. But we're saying within the task, do forever everything in here. So it never ends. And as you can see, I'm just writing to the LED pin what it is not now. We've been through this once before. So we say digital write, whatever the LED pin that's been passed through as a parameter now over over here. Yeah. And we say, well, if it's off, turn it on. If it's on, turn it off. And then we delay. Now, of course, delays, as you know, are very bad things in Arduino programs. Like everything just comes to a stop. Yeah. Except it doesn't here. Well, that task delays, yes, but it doesn't affect anything else. It's not single single streaming now. Okay. And all this gubbins here. I'm just saying, well, which task is it that's currently running and delay for a, a different length of time so you can see a different flash rate on the LEDs. That's all that's doing. Okay. So the both tasks are running the same code, but of course they're not passing in the same parameter up here. Yeah, and which we then extract dereference into that um, uint, 8-bit uint, single byte. Uh, but apart from that, they're doing the same. One's on the red LED, one's on the green LED, different pins. And then the loop. The loop is the loop, as it always is. But what I'm saying here also is, because it's a task now, don't ever end. If it ends, this bit here ends, kaboom. I know, technical term. So we say do forever. Just print out this is iteration whatever, increment the count and delay for a second to just keep going around here. So do nothing loop really, but it does actually, you know, prove that it's running. Let's see if it's uh, still running, shall we? Oh, there it is. Oh, there we are. Look, we're on iteration 639, 640. So it's still going away quite happily. Good. That's what we need, need to know. And that's it. There is, there is no more to this program. It's pretty small, isn't it? Why do we do it like this? Why is it so complicated. Why do we have to do it like this? And the reason is that this is all written in C and you have to therefore use pointers and not references because C does not have references. So that's a, a, bit, of a bit of an advantage for C++. But unfortunately we can't use that technique here. And that's it. That is all the code that we need and what I would suggest very strongly if you think, hey, this is good, we can actually run tasks and stuff in the background that will never get affected, then download this, play about with it, get the two LEDs running. It's child's play to use. And um, you, can, you can experiment, make it all go wrong, put it back right again, find out why it went wrong, and you'll learn that way. It's, it's the only way to do it, to be quite honest. Now, it's one thing to have this free RTOS running on an Arduino Uno running two independent tasks, in fact three if you include the loop, yes, which we should do, flashing a couple of LEDs, uh, yawn, you know, yeah, I know what you like. Um, that's not really practical though, is it? Can we say that free RTOS on an Arduino can actually do something useful? I say useful in terms of, you know, can it actually run a proper project? Hmm, let's have a look. Now, 
it's all very well to have sort of an academic approach to this and go, oh, look, we've managed to get two tasks running that blink in LED. But let's do something a little bit more that, well, realistic, because I'm doing this, uh, showing some Adafruit uh, NeoPixels here for my uh, bin lid con uh, monitor, right? So this is real stuff. And in fact, I showed this when I had problems with those NeoPixels on an ESP32. Sometimes they work, mostly they didn't, and I had to use a, a level shifter. And loads of you said, oh, I've never used a level shifter. And uh, well, I'm, I think what I've, I've narrowed it down to is actually these two devices here are very, very old. I mean, many, many years. I think the newer versions are fine. The older versions are a bit more sensitive to voltage. But anyway, that's irrelevant because we're still running on an Arduino Uno, nothing special about that. Well, of course, there's lots special about an Arduino Uno, but nothing different about it from the standard one. So I thought, well, can I run two tasks that actually do something worthwhile? Basically, I can create two Adafruit NeoPixel objects and yeah, just, just well, do basically what you're seeing there. Yeah, And the answer is, well, as you can see, yes. So this is the code for the NeoPixel demo that I've done, but I'm not going to walk through that by any means. What I'll do is put it up into the GitHub and you can download it and either have a look at it, if you understand it, or indeed fire it up. Yeah, um, It's standard Arduino speak. And um, yeah, I do use the Adafruit NeoPixel library, um, but then don't we all? It's that, it's that one or the fast LED one. Um, yeah, and it uses a couple of tasks, exactly the same what we've been doing really, but it just just proves that we can run a bit more than just a flashing LED. So that's for you to look at in your own time. And I do really, I do recommend you have a look at it because it's quite, quite amazing how simple it is really. I mean, just one of these little things here, this is just taken from that previous video I showed you when I had trouble with the ESP32. So all it does is, you know, loop backwards and forwards, different colors. There's nothing to it. But the fact is it is running in a different task. So yeah, it's all useful stuff. Okay, so there we have it then. If you want to experiment with um, free RTOS, you know, the slightly modified version to fit on the Arduino, now's a chance. Just running these two tasks alone is probably worth it. Um, I'll put this code so you can, you can muck about with it and change it and see how it works up in the GitHub hub, along with the, the code, of course, that flashed the two LEDs initially. Slightly simpler code, just an on off. But I'm, I'm blown away by this, the fact that the Arduino can run any sort of operating system, but obviously it can. Just remember though that that loop is no longer working, right? It doesn't do anything anymore unless you create a task to run it. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, we're done here. Now, if you found this interesting or educational or whatever, do remember to give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. That'd be nice. Um, comments, queries, say what you like. Yeah, put them down there. Yeah. yeah, all right. Even if it's I told you so, yes, I admit I got it wrong. The uh, Artos is great for the Arduino, much to my surprise. And uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Otherwise, you'll never hear from me again, which would be a very sad state of affairs. Cool. I'll see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.